Hi everyone, Cindy Yu here from Outside the Locker Room. This is the Expert League where we interview different industry experts to find out more about what they do and to give us some advice. Today I'm really excited to have a special guest joining me today from Melbourne, Michelle O'Brien. Hi Michelle, how are you? Hi Cindy, how are you? Good, thank you. Really yes, lovely to have to you on this um, segment. Thank you for having me. <laughs> so Michelle is a youth and family counsellor and she works with both individuals and families specialising in equine therapy and she has her own establishment called Heal at Millbrook and she's really passionate about helping individuals to explore their strengths and then subsequently believe in their abilities. So Michelle, I'm really excited to have you on today and I, we can't wait to hear more about equine therapy. Um, can you tell us firstly what that is? Equine therapy has become very popular, I think, throughout Australia. Not as big in Australia. It's very big in America, but it's but it's becoming very popular and very big in um, Australia. It's equine therapy is working alongside horses. We have horses and donkeys, so working alongside horses and donkeys in a therapeutic environment to sort support people in their growth and learning. So there's we have equine assisted psychotherapy and we have equine assisted learning. So equine assisted psychotherapy is your deeper level therapeutic intervention. So that's your working with your anxiety and your depression and your real clinical forms of mental health issues. And then your equine, equine assisted learning supports some growth as far as um, what you want to learn about yourself. So maybe it might be some teamwork or it might be leadership skills or it might be, you know, boundaries or something like that. So there's two sort of... So there's equine assisted psychotherapy and equine assisted learning. And horses um, are exceptional beings. They're a sentient being. So they pick up on emotions um, and they are able to um, reflect back at times about um, how you're thinking and feeling. Uh, but it's not about us. It's not about my, what I think and feel the horses are doing. It's about... Um, a client coming into a session and they'll interact with the horses and and that it, once they've interacted and done some activities with the horses it's then about discussing the process and what their thoughts and feelings and behaviors might have might have come out of that if that makes sense mm. Yeah. yeah. Right. yeah. So it sounds like horses are really um, have really great senses, and they can really help us to um, get in touch with our feelings as well. And so, who who's um, this therapy best for? And how do horses help with our well being journey? Yeah. Well, we work with we work with such a diverse range of per people. So we work with anyone from seven to seven upwards. Wow. We work with individuals, we work with, um, we work with groups, we work with families, mm -hmm. uh, we work with trauma, people that have suffered significant trauma. Um, it's really, I think our program is for uh, people that um, aren't, I sometimes not ready for sitting down and talking in a, in a counselling based capacity or, um, or people that are struggling to find a way forward um, then they might have been linking with in a cancer capacity, but um, it's not working for them. So, so it's a, just a real alternative. Um, it's a, an alternative therapy mm. it, that uses solution focused. Um, it's a, theoretically we use, use solution focused, person centered um, approach. Mm. Um, so horses pick up on what you are. Feeling horses are horses are um, we're predators. They pick up on predators. They're very sensitive to their environment. Very sensitive to their to what's going on around them. You know, um, my colleague often describes to understand how sensitive they are. If they were if they were at a dam drinking and uh, a lion came up for a drink and the lion was just drinking, they they would maybe be okay with that but then they can sense if that line is is thinking oh, a little bit hungry now they can pick up on that so they would then they would then scatter they are very sensitive to what's going on around them and, and pick up on what we're we're feeling um yeah and that's a survival instinct that's a very natural um process for for a horse it's a yeah amazing it's, 
And yeah. so it's sounding yeah. like they, um, they're very sensitive and they're very intuitive um, and they can, they can sense how we're feeling and also they can help us to express our feelings in a different way. It's an alternative. Oh, absolutely. Thing. Yes, yes, absolutely. And they might even, you know, we might have some, it depends on what somebody comes with and we, and it depends on the behaviour um, that they display out in the yard and how they react. Um, and everybody's different, clearly. So they pick up on what, what's going on for everybody individually and differently. Um, you know, so we we will talk about um, what's going on for a person through the horses. It's not about, it's, it's such a different process and it's it's really tricky to talk about in a short space of time. Yeah. Um, so we would say to you, so just so if you're in the yard and the horses started to, to uh, run and play or jump it or I wouldn't call it play I would just say well so what do you think is going on for the horses mm -hmm. and it might remind you of something that's happening in your family or it might remind you or a child of something that's happening in your schoolyard and so they and they might then go oh that horse is like my friend or so it's it's speaking metaphorically they start to use the horses as a metaphor to what's actually going on in their lives so um yeah so it's it's talking yeah, is that again? Does that make sense? I'm going, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's really, really fascinating. It's really great that they've got that metaphor, and um, it's almost like that third person perspective on what's going on absolutely. in life. So, yeah. it sounds like a really meaningful process, and I'm, I'm sure, yeah, a lot of people would benefit a, a lot out of this, especially people that might not be able to express their feelings in the traditional, you know, talking therapy ways. So, yeah, um, absolutely really great and so how did you get into um, equine therapy and um, how did you come about being a counsellor? Well I've always I've been in the um, welfare field for a number of years now for about 15 years before that I was in retail and I always always felt um, a real pull to helping young people mm -hmm. um, so eventually I ended up working in uh, residential care in Melbourne um, that was the beginning of my welfare, working in the welfare field. I went from there um, to work back near, near Ballarat. And so I was working with at young, at risk, people at risk of homelessness. Um, so I, as a reconnect worker, so I was working um, and supporting the families with whatever was they needed to, to um, yeah, just, you know, work on what was going on at home for that person to be at risk of homelessness. So we then, um, it was through that that I just continually wanted to upskill myself. Um, so I'm constantly looking for ways to support people and how can I, like what works for you, Cindy, does it work for me? So I was, so we're always looking for something else, something alternative to help people with. So we had the opportunity through our organisation that I was working with at the time to, to come up with innovative ideas on how to work with, with people. So a colleague of mine and I, a long, very long story cut short, we haven't got enough time. Um, we put, put a proposal to, together to, to run some equine therapy in a pilot program back in 2014 and it was approved. And due to that, the success of that 10 week pilot program, we um, were continued, were continued um, to be funded up until this year. Amazing. So, yes, so we were very, very fortunate um, to be able to to do that, but you know the other thing I was thinking was that horses um, and it, like people say, oh, but any animal, any animal um, is a therapeutic animal. Absolutely, I, I agree with that on some capacity because if you're patting something that you love, like a lizard or a guinea pig or something like that, it releases your happy hormones, it releases your serotonin and your dopamine and all those hormones. Mm -hmm. But the lizard hasn't got the ability to pick up and mirror back um, mm -hmm. the things your things that you're thinking and feeling like a horse does. Um, and the horses, horses, you know, they're a herd animal uh, and they have hierarchy. So that's where people in their in their herd. So that's where people also relate to them as their family. So sometimes you might say to so someone might say, oh, I think that horse is the boss. And I say, what makes that horse the boss? And then they go, oh, that horse is like my dad or that horse is like my mum or, you know. Um, and then you start getting the stories from what they think the horses are and who they think the horses are. Um, or donkeys, actually. I can't leave out the donkeys. <laughs> These special donkeys. Yeah. yeah. So, 
Um, did I get off track again there? I'm really no, no, that's great. And it sounds like they're really, really special animals and um, a really unique experience when they're going through this equine therapy. And I can definitely hear the passion in your voice. And um, I, I'm sure a lot of people would love to work with you. And so can you tell the audience a little bit more about Heal and at Millbrook and how they could get yeah. in contact with yourself and the team to engage in your services? Yep. And I must, I must just quickly too, we have, uh, there's always two human facilitators in the paddock. And there's, the reason is because we are accredited through Wagala, who is an internationally renowned um, model or practice. Um, so, so one of us, is, our roles is to keep people emotionally safe, the other one is to keep them physically safe. So there's always two human facilitators and then we have the, our other four-legged seven facilitators that we work alongside of. If anyone um, would like to know more about us, we ha I have we ha now have a um, just very new uh, a website yeah. and we also have a Heal at Millbrook um, page, so Heal at Millbrook Heal um, Facebook page. Um, all our contact details are on there. We also um, offer a couple of different other other opportunities for, for some support with mental health um, through that. We're about an hour out of Melbourne um, and 20 minutes out of Ballarat. So, yeah, it's not too bad of travel. Um, yeah, that would just, yeah, it's just a matter of um, hopping on our Hill at Melbrook page or, mm. or um, yeah, I can, I can supply that email as well. Sounds good. Thank you so much, Michelle. Um, do you have any final advice for the audience at home that are maybe going through a transition phase at the moment and might be going through some challenges? I do. You know, I you send this question to me, Cindy, and I was thinking, you know what, I think my biggest thing I would like to say is be kind, be kind to each other. I know, I know we've seen that in the media, and but I genuinely, if you're not traveling well, reach out reach out to someone that you trust you know identify identify on your hand it doesn't have to be five people that that you can identify as support people but if you've got one two or three just reach out if you're not traveling around well reach out equally you know be kind to somebody else that, you know just be kind to yourself and each other don't be too hard on yourself if you are having a bad day mm. you know just yeah because odds are somebody else around you is too and you know it's really good to share yeah. That that's what's going on for you and how you're thinking and feeling and it's it's never silly to to open up to someone yeah, yeah. it's important really yeah. important words that you're sharing there it's about starting that conversation and um creating the space you know where you can share it allows other people to be able to share as well so really really that's great cool. advice michelle and um i want to thank you so much for joining me on here today on the expert league it's been an absolute pleasure having you and um really look forward to hopefully meeting your horses and donkeys one day and if anyone else would you like to more them, than welcome. Can, um, come down <laughs> and visit too Absolutely. You know you're more than welcome, Cindy, anytime. <laughs> Thanks, Michelle. Have a great day. You're you too. Take care.